Welcome to the creative community. I'm your host David Starkey and today we're leaving the friendly confines of Studio A at the Santa Barbara Channels to come up here to the home of Ray Sirirol, a longtime member of the creative community artistic staff. Ray is a dedicated community activist. He is also a brilliant set and lighting designer as viewers will know. Today we're going to get to know Ray a little bit better as a painter. So Ray, your house is full of art everywhere you look, but I'd love to hear a little bit about specific pieces. This is right inside the door. What are we looking at here? This here is actually, um, was inspired by my brother-in-law's mother. Uh, and this takes place actually in, in the home, in the kitchen of the home that I was raised in, in Lincoln Heights, in Los Angeles. Um, and um, I placed the theme here is uh, the woman who's making quesadillas out of government cheese, and that's what this gray box symbolizes. And through all my paintings, you'll always see the, uh, the religious faith of, of each individual in Catholicism within Chicanos, Latinos, Mexicanos is an important element in our culture. And you have the, the image of the Virgin of Guadalupe. So you have this strong vertical coming down um, and taking me into the photograph. Um, I also have dripping water, which is very common within people that cannot afford plumbers. You know, so it's, uh, I, try to, I try to convey the, uh, the struggle that takes place um, in the ghetto in the barrios with a lot of my paintings. Now that's really important to you clearly because we see a working class emphasis in, in so many of your subjects. Right. Talk a little bit more about that. Well, it's um, here again, it's my upbringing, um, part of my culture, and um, um, I have this passion for the, uh, the humans that uh, sacrifice you know, their lives in, in our world, which, you know, we have, we have complete opposites. We have the extreme poor and we have the extreme rich. And um, I still have the passion for my culture and my people because I'm still in this category. This is a this is a portrait. Um, for one thing, it's, it's it's got really big, broad strokes. It, the the face almost seems to be leaping off the canvas the way that you you angle the perspective. What about some of the artistic decisions that went into the painting itself? Um, here again, it's uh, an influence from um, my schooling. Um, it goes back to. Uh, um, instructions that I received from Harry Carmian, who's uh, one of our local painters here, um, one of the oldest living masters in California, figurative painters. Um, my palette was influenced by him, and um, I apply a lot of emphasis in, in composition uh, or in structure, that, and, and these are part of the elements uh, that uh, he taught us as students setting with him. What about the frame? That's a terrific looking frame. Is that Thank something you. that you made? Yeah, here again, it's uh, the frames are... are are part of the struggle that I went through as a painter because when I was growing up, paintings weren't accepted in the galleries unless they were framed. And frames are extremely expensive, so uh, I decided to go with a ghetto frame, which is uh, something that I, you know, started producing with cardboard. To be actually honest with you, and um, I started working with different elements. I'm working with different materials here. This is burlap on on uh, wrapped canvas on wood. Um, and a lot of my paintings have uh, wood in, you know, underneath the structure or foam core that I wrap with canvas and apply gesso, and then we go on with the, with the paint. Now, once again, we've got your emphasis on religious iconography. Right. This here, this piece here, was uh, a piece that actually uh, got me into the Sullivan Goss Gallery. Uh, this painting here was uh, produced towards the end of last year. Um, it was a uh, somewhat of a magical piece because um, it was brought forth through emotion. It was it was a surprise to me that um, it was accepted. But here again, I was I was going into a, a different um, direction. I was actually applying uh, Muslim on top of canvas with this piece. So you have Muslim on top of canvas. It's building up texture. Um, and I was inspired by the kiwi fruit, and that's where I, mm -hmm. I, I saw a piece, I saw a sliced piece of kiwi, and I, I thought it would be easy to incorporate the image of the Virgin of Guadalupe within the center right, right. of the kiwi. So you have you have the palette of the kiwi uh, along with undercoats of blues and, and, and yellows that uh, that help vibrate this piece here, along with the texture of the. the uh, Right, and as I look at the painting, you're talking about heavily textured and how heavily textured the uh, the canvas is, but it almost seems to run onto the exactly. frame itself. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's see what we've got over here now. This is a piece that is uh, alluding to a famous painting by uh, Renoir. That's correct. 
um, the composition, you know, the, the placement of the individuals in the composition was taken from his, uh, his one painting, I believe it was called um, uh, Party on the Boathouse. I've titled this one Friday Night in Lincoln Heights. Here again, it's a reflection of my upbringing in, in East L.A., in Lincoln Heights. Uh, this, the the uh, location is the, the porch that I grew up in, the home that I grew up in. It wasn't actually like this, but it was inspired by, and that's the direction I'm going with a lot of my work. Um, I. I use reality as an influence, but I take it into another direction. I try to uh, use a little creativity and, uh, um, and sort of a fantasy type look. Uh, the frame itself was inspired by graffiti. And here again, the three-dimensional look, you have a foam core that's built on top of each other, and then I wrap it with uh, um, linen, and, um, and then we're able to uh, adjust what and apply the, uh, the oil onto it. Well, it's interesting that the, the frames here seem to be so important that it kind of takes the painting out into the world. You know, it's yes. a transition zone from, from the, the, the central part of the painting into the, to the world where the viewer is. Now, when we look around here, we have um, some other pieces that are not purely paint. We've got some, we've got drawing. Talk about them. Well, um, this was a, an etching that was given to me by Harry Carmine just okay. recently. Above that, uh, you actually have a pretty um, broad variety of the different uh, stages that I went through. This here was painted uh, back in 92. And this is, um, I actually started working with, um, I was influenced by retablos. Um, and those are uh, works of art that are done on wood. Um, not all, but some, a lot of them are done on wood, especially in the Southwest. Um, in Mexico, they actually paint retablos on metal, usually um, um, oil on metal or tin. Uh, but this is acrylic on wood. And here again, I'm going back. I was inspired by an article I read about this uh, gang member in, um, East LA that was shot by police officers. They assumed he had a weapon because he had his hands behind mm. his back and they shot him dead in the, um, uh, out in the, uh, the projects out in East LA. And I, that's where that influence of that painting came from. He's got this target around his heart. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you have a graffiti influence on your frame. And the piece above that? The piece above that is a newer piece and it was done on an AOL tin, uh, recycled. And um, it's, an, it's a contemporary look of the farm worker eagle. Here again, it's a, it's a piece that I was just inspired that I had to express in a, in a new look. Now again, so when you and I were talking the other day, you told me that there's two icons that you try and work into your work whenever you That's can. Right. The, the virgin and then the farm worker uh, yeah. symbol. Yes. Yeah. So both those go hand in hand. Um, whenever there's, um, there's that fight in the, in the fields, you'll always see the campesinos or the farm workers you know, on strike or on marches, and you'll see those two icons. You'll see the symbol of the farm worker eagle, which is the takeoff of the eagle itself. That symbolizes Mexico. And then you have the faith, the, the image of the Virgin of Guadalupe. Uh, she's the patron saint of Mexico and, and the Americas. And, and of course, within the, the Latino community, and especially the Mexicans, you know, where a lot of, a lot of Mexicans are Catholics, you know, they, they have that strong belief in the Catholicism. So you have both the, the strength of the farm worker ego and the faith of the religion with the obedient of Guadalupe. Now, your studio is here in your house. Can we take a look at Sure. That? We could go on top and back. We're here in your studio now, and we've got a really big painting. It, it's, you see the Virgin sort of in the center of the cosmos almost. So talk about this particular piece. 